It's about teaching us to really dig in to the Word, really want to understand it for our own lives. Not just about what we can get out of health, not just what we can get out of the prevention of disease, but how to really have a relationship with who God really is in our life, what He should be in our life. That's a Be in Health conference. They really do help us understand, for our own lives, the connection between relationships, specifically broken relationships, and disease. You're willing and ready to change. That's what produces a strength in the relationship between you and God, the relationships you have with others and in your own heart. And that's where that health and that's where that hope will show forth. Our subject today is choices, and uh, it'll take us on a long journey of a lot of Scripture. You know, I think if we hear what God has to say, it's more important than what I have to say. So you don't need a nursery rhyme, you need to hear God's mind. And uh, that's what you use to navigate this thing called life. And so I'm thrilled to be with you. We're going to talk about many things today. Uh, on into late in the afternoon, it's going to be exciting as we get into some of the choices that we have to make, even down to our ordinary lives and, and so on. My subject begins uh, with the failure of certain people to make good decisions. This whole thing has to do with a decision. Everything you do in life is based on thought and what you do with it. Unless you're just closing your eyes and rambling through life and you won't get too far because you'll bump into everything. So one of the first beings that was such a miserable failure was a very exalted being named Lucifer. He was referred to as a son of God in the book of Job. So the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came with them. He was an archangel that was in charge of creation in the old world, ruled by angels. And he had a bad thought. And he followed that bad thought. Have you ever had a bad thought? <laughs> Have you ever followed that bad thought? How many years? <laughs> Have you ever had to change your mind? There's hope for you. Because many people are stuck habitually in a rut. And to change means they're going to have to leave behind things that may not be good for them and embrace things that would be good for them. But some people don't want what's good for them. And they follow this pathway of destruction. The word that I want to bring to you out of Isaiah 14, verses 3 through 4, is what, now the word Lucifer is not in the Hebrew scriptures. It uh, came to us in Latin Vulgate to the Roman Catholic Church. The word that's in the Hebrew is Hillel, the bright one. And that archangel rebelled. But in his way of thinking, he exercised something that you have. And every created being has your will. Your will. Because he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be just like the Most High God. And he not only 
did that, but he tempted all of creation, one-third of all angels, and declared war on the father of all spirits in heaven. They lost. I will warn you in advance, any created being that decides to rebel against the living father will lose. You will lose. So let's make a choice decision to join the living father in his purposes in all of eternity. And let's decide that when we read what he said about his plans for mankind and eternity, that we say, amen, not ya yeah, but. Sheep say, amen. Goats say, ya yeah, but. This is not a ya yeah, but sermon. This is an amen. God said it. I said amen. So be it. Adam and Eve were created no knowledge of sin. And you know the story how that Satan came to tempt Eve. And he did it by changing God's word. He added to. He took away. We've never stopped to this day that I speak to you. Bible translators continually change God's word to meet their resistance. Well, Eve listened. Adam listened. And when... Um, they fell. The Lord came and talked to Adam and said, What did you do that for? I told you not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Why did you do that for? And Adam said, It's that woman you gave me. We men have inherited that as iniquity. It's that woman you gave me, Lord, why I can't make choice decisions to be a spiritual man. Now, I'm playing with you, of course. Or am I? We have a program here at Being Health that's called For My Life. Most of the husbands have renamed it For My Wife. Well, I think we all need to change. I think we all need to learn something. I think we all need to make choice decisions. And sometimes what you know is a hindrance to what you need to know. There's a scripture that talks about God's people ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Here didn't get to hear, and didn't get to hear in the walk of life. The Lord said to Adam, you made a wrong choice. Now, I've paraphrased that. You've made a wrong choice. I told you what to do, but in Genesis 3.17, the Lord said to Adam, because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife. That decision that Adam made changed the course of mankind. And today we're just in the process of recovering from that bad decision as humans. And the great power of the cross is the decision that the Father made because he loved us. God chose to save you. He made a decision that while you were dead in your trespasses and sins, he prepared a way out. And the great power of the cross and Jesus at the cross is the Father is in the process of recovering what he lost in the tragedy 
of the Garden of Eden. And you are the fruit of it. But you still have to work out your own salvation daily. If you've enjoyed this segment of this conference, I encourage you to join our Overcomers community. There you can partake in a whole lot more stuff and watch the rest of this conference.